Thank you, Shadows, there. Live from the bunker will not be seen this week so that we may bring you the following special program. Hello, everyone. Hello. This is Science Fiction Snob, and we are here with the replacement show to Live from the Bunker, Dead from the Dugout, spinoff replacement, whatever you want to call it. And uh, today we're going to talk about Star Trek, and I have my co-host, Cam. Introduce yourself, Cam. Hi, I'm Cam. You want to step? Well, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like uh, I like Star Trek. Okay, great introduction. <laughs> yeah, so you might have you heard like... me on other shows, such as Live from the Bunker. Right on, and that's about uh, it. And you're happy for us to address you as Cam, or do you want to be Cam One One Three? Cam will or... suffice. Cam will do it. Short form. All right, we'll just call you by your short form. All right. So today we are uh, we're taking over for Jason. I want to thank. You know, just for the week, um, I want to thank him for he gave me a little bit of that introduction there, and I kind of spliced it together with some stuff, so some you can recognize that live from the bunker um, part of that intro. So thanks to him for that, and uh, thanks for him for promoting the show and everybody else who promoted the show. So we are going to give it a try and uh, see what we can do. Is um, we have. Uh, who do we have in the we have some people in the chat tonight we've got uh looks like two uh weatherman and death angel shadow um so yeah yeah so thanks for joining us guys appreciate it. it and uh we're killing it with two subscribers uh, two watchers i should say so we're killing it that's great I heard, um, should, I, should I should I call family members and see if I can get them on to boost these numbers a little bit? You bet. Call everybody. All right. Okay. So, um, shall we get to the topic, or should we spend? I'm assuming everyone can hear us. So, um, or should we spend 20 minutes trying to figure out audio problems or something before we? Uh, well, I mean, we might as well uh, just to kind of keep things interesting. I think I think maybe we should just skip that part and go on. Okay. All right. Um, oh, hey, Das, are you coming in here? We invited uh, invited you over there if you want to come in. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm following you my own on. Uh, I'm watching on um, YouTube myself just to make sure that everything's going okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. We want to come in here. We we'd love to have one more uh, for our first our questions. We're going to focus on Star Trek, and we're gonna. I'm not going to say we're going to go into a deep dive into it. But I would like to um, at least go, uh, you know, talk a little bit about it and a little bit in more detail than just sort of a look at the, um, at the, uh, you know, at the news that's coming over. Oh, wait. Oh, we got somebody. Here we go. Hail and low man. Oh, my God. All right. Ooh, Open the fancy. doors. <laughs> Open the doors, let in uh, Death Angel Shadow. All right. Thanks That's, for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. This is fancy and everything. You got sound effects. You got the whole, whole nine yards going on. Jason doesn't have sound effects. Come on. I know. <laughs> we got to get. Go. Oh, he was he was messaging me last night talking about his audio problems again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Eat that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Take that. All right. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's head on to the first question. So I'm gonna. Um, I mentioned this earlier, just so everybody's. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of propose a question and about Star Trek in this case. And, you know, we're just going to talk about it. We'll go from, you know, one guy give his opinion, then we can comment, and then we'll go to the next, that kind of thing. So let's start, uh, Death Angel, let's start with you. Uh, the question I want to pose to the panel is, uh, when did the Star Trek franchise die, in your view? Hmm. That's a good question. You know, to be honest, I didn't hate the... Uh, the first new movies, um, I you know lens flare and all, um, but I, I really think I, I only made it about six episodes into the uh, the the new series, and that was just I, I couldn't handle it anymore. I just it made me so sick. That seemed to be my threshold about six episodes. I'll give anything a try for about six episodes. Well, which okay, so which franchise are you talking about? The new when you said the. the- the, the the discovery, discovery. Yeah, I, I you know I, I I was okay with uh, with the uh, with the two movies, the JJ movies, the first two. They were all right. They weren't anything special, but you know. So you'd say the death is the second JJ movie? Is that what you're saying? Or probably probably yeah. I don't words in your mouth. So yeah, yeah. That's sometime right around then. That was kind of was going downhill at that point. And, Oh, when Discovery launched, it was just horrid. I tried. I tried. I, I give it. I give it the college try. Well, welcome, uh, Green Girl, in the chat. Thanks for coming out, uh, Cam. Your opinion on the question? Okay, I have. Uh, uh, mine's a, l- a little more detailed. Uh, in in that it is the J. J. Abrams movies, um, but specifically in that it's when whoever you know is in charge of allowing things like this when they allow jj abrams to not just make his own movie but reach back in time and and put his dirty mitts all over what came before this you know this oh it really rewrote the whole star trek history nonsense and it's or this a different timeline or whatever but uh, all that's garbage it should have been okay this is a reboot this is your own thing it's separate from the old trek um and that's where that was the final deciding point, uh, or I should say that's the pivot point where things went wrong, because now you've got a big it's a big mess continuity wise, uh, first of all. But it, it also, you know, it, it just drags people into where they don't want to be. Um, so that, I think, was the key point that really at least started putting nails in the coffin. So the, the whole Kelvin timeline you saying is the was the beginning of the that was the yeah death. yes the fact that there is it that it is the fact oh, there is, is a, another, there is a covid timeline yes it, it, yeah. exactly and but but once again if it, if it was just oh here's the jj abrams star trek universe and it's its own separate thing then i don't think it would have been a problem um it, it it's it's that it, and a green girl is is mentioning it here is uh he he loves to get his hands on other people's stuff and and ruin it you know essentially um on his own fine do whatever you want and and go go for it but he always wants to meddle with with other things it's like when when he was announced for for doing superman sometime back of course that never happened but it was like oh god you know here here it comes he's (laughs) what is he gonna do to destroy superman now others of course another franchise off the (laughs) yeah exactly i mean it's like how many franchises is this guy gonna be allowed to destroy if it was just his own thing and he had his own sandbox to play in. Fine, it wouldn't have been a problem. Old Trek would have been left alone. Everything would have been much happier, in my opinion. So, um, well, I have to agree with your comments about JJ. He does kind of go and, you know, we no. uh, we've yeah. been recently uh, rewatching Lost. My kids, we just started the second um, second season, and they were kind of into it. And now I'm I'm kind of like pulling teeth to say, hey, do you guys want to like you know try to watch it? an episode, you know, a couple episodes a week. I'm trying, hey, do you want to watch Lost? And I'm kind of pulling teeth to get them to watch again. So I don't know. Well, maybe they've lost interest or they're just whatever. But Well, you know, I mean, JJ can't finish anything. Yeah. So 
Well, I don't think, you know, he also gets credit for a lot of things he doesn't do. It's like, yeah, he was there kind of the beginning for Lost, but after, I don't know, maybe the first season, I don't think he had anything to do with it, to be honest with you. I think, um, I, I forget the guys, the other guys' names, but um, uh, Abrams wasn't around. I, I'm quite sure of that. I, 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 I didn't want to derail the conversation on Star Trek talking about Lost, just to mention that sure. um, I agree with you about J.J., but um, I wanted to, um, when I thought the franchise died, I'd say it was about after the first Kelvin um, movie. So I I don't mind, you know, J.J. Abrams, Abrams aside, whoever, if you want to come in and you want to reboot a series and do something different, you know, um, make it darker, make it lighter, make it whatever. I'm okay with that in general. Uh, for people doing that i mean it's as long as you know we're aware we know that this is not something this is you know something that's going to be different and i think that you know the key part part of that is having um vulcan get destroyed in the first movie like the federation is going to be a a completely different type of thing without um the the Vulcan, the Vulcans yeah. being involved and yeah. you know you can see that like i see the federation is it's primarily you know um, a human sort of pushed thing, but the Vulcans are there to keep a you know keep a, the reins on the humans and stop them from going too far and and you know getting out of control because we're kind of you know we like to get involved in stuff. Yeah, that's and, how and, I always he, saw the Federation. You're right, and 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 Abrams was just allowed to throw a boulder in the middle of the the pond mm -hmm. and then say, "Ha ha, look what happened," and and without any sense of the repercussions it's going to do. It, it like I said, it he reached back in time and screwed over everything. Yeah, so I I mean I'm like I'm okay with him throwing that boulder in there, but you have to follow up on it. It's got to be. I mean, this is a huge change to the Federation, right? You're taking out, you know, the the. The, the, the guys who say, hey, be careful, you know, you, you know, we need to calm down, slow down a little bit. So you're taking them out. So that's going to be that's going to change the Federation substantially. Right. Oh, yeah. And that should yeah. affect everything. Right. Right. Like, there was no plan to do anything. Apparently, it's not like they were like, oh, so we're going to relaunch these other shows and we're going to, you know, go from there somewhere. It's like they had no rhyme or reason for doing it. it you know, it could have been a viable story, but kind of like jj's other work it's just oh i just do this and then i kind of walk away or you know nothing ever comes from it yeah i, mean, I think I, I don't think like if they're going to do a calvin timeline the other shows i mean assuming the other shows are in the calvin timeline then it should affect it yes if they're not then it doesn't have to of course but um if we're considering everything after you know jj trek is part of the calvin i guess it kind of is um i mean that should affect it Seriously, the, the the whole tone of the show should be a lot darker, and I don't just mean, you know, the color in the background. There should be a lot more, you know, it should be less happy and, and more, you know, kind of like when, Voy to be. when Voyager went to the what was it, the Year of Hell or whatever. Yeah, it, the Year of they, Hell. The tone just shifted, and everything was dark and. Yeah, the dark mirror universe type things. Yeah. The um. So now that said, my actual. You know, the death of the, of the, the franchise is actually in um, in the second movie where they basically destroy uh, Star the Star Trek universe by um, the first thing they do is they, you know, you can now transport at light speed or something. So now we don't need spaceships because we can just transport from planet to planet. Right. That's what uh, Khan, the new Khan does. Yeah. And then the second part is when, uh, who was it? Is it Spock dies? And they use Khan's blood to bring them alive. So basically, people live forever. Um, they just destroy the entire universe there and sort of make it, you know, why bother having spaceships? Why bother have Star Trek? I mean, let's just, you know, transport from planet to planet. Yeah, there's. The, it seems like a lot of these things are, is, wouldn't it be cool if, and then they don't ever think about the then, you know, uh, that comes afterwards. Right. And you can, you know, you can do science fiction without spaceships. There are some science fiction universes where, I mean, Stargate has spaceships, but it's kind of, you don't really need spaceships in Stargate, right? Because you just go from gate to gate and, you know, there's nothing in space. We don't really want to go into, like, do we really want, the reason we go into space is to get to some other planet, right? So do you really need to, you know, fly through all that emptiness? Uh, 
you know, it, it yeah. prevents you from fighting over it uh, if you don't if you don't have spaceships. But you know, we really it's what it's what's you know between the flying that we want to you know that's more important to us, right? When you fly from yeah. L.A. to to uh, well, the um, journey Australia, is, the journey is part of you know any good story. True, it's, you know it's you know, and Stargate had 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 ways of you know doing it their story wasn't was the adventures on the off world on the on the new world primarily yeah, yeah. for sure um, um and you can do a good science fiction story like that you can have the story on the right right but in star so, trek i mean that it is the trek yes <laughs> that's the yes. part of the name i'm not i'm not saying like as i'm as i'm saying in this case i you know that's a big mistake you're taking the spaceships out of star trek i mean star trek is about spaceships they should never have had done had you know they could have done that a million different ways if they want to get con from here to, from A to B and all this stuff could have done it different ways this whole you know they just destroyed their own universe and then sort of just forgot about it and I I hate when you know science fiction does that oh well, let's destroy our universe and then oh well everything carries on the same you know it's not a it's not a weekly episode of The Simpsons where everything goes reverts to normal after every uh, thing but yeah you know, and that anyway. that's a good point in regards to sci-fi in general, you know, one of the basic premises of sci-fi is it doesn't have to be realistic, but it has to be consistent. You know, it's, it, it's science, it's, you know, fake science basically. And when you just kind of discard it and treat it like fantasy, then it, it becomes something fundamentally different. Well, yeah, I would agree. Science fiction versus science fantasy. Yep. I mean, you know, all right, let's, um, I think we've killed that one for now anyway. <laughs> Let's, uh, okay, your opinion, what is the worst or the most cringy moment of the Star Trek franchise? And you could pick anything from anywhere, any timeline, animated or not, live, whatever you want. Uh, Cam, why don't you go first? Okay, uh, I, I'm sure there's a, a ton of cringe in, in the new stuff. Uh, much of it I haven't seen, but I'll go back, I'll go back deep to uh, Star Trek Next Generation. And that is, I, mm, I the, the name of the episode escapes me at the moment, but it's where they uh, discovered that warp drive was destroying the universe in a what I thought was a clumsy uh, environmental pseudo environmental statement. And it's like, well, we have to go warp five now, or we'll destroy the you know the universe. And um, so I, I thought that was a stupid storyline. Um, it very on Star Trek, you know, uh, saying, "Oh, by the way, Gene Roddenberry, uh, the thing that uh, your heroes have been doing is destroying the universe. Isn't that isn't that cool?" Uh, you know, so just thematically bad. Everything about it was bad. But what <laughs> it what made it even more cringy is they quickly kind of just ignored it. It's like, eh, yeah, well, we wanted to make that big statement and virtue signal or whatever, and now oh, we really don't want to go warp five though, so we'll just kind of wave our hands and, and it'll go away. Wow, I think I, I forgot about that episode. <laughs> right. And so did they. And, and you yeah. did, and I remember it, but it's not high up in my thought processes because right. again, they just ignored it. Like he said, like Cam mentioned, they just okay, uh, forget about this. Let's move on. Right? I I agree. I, you know, I I I would say, I mean, there's there's been a few cringy things. I think. A, a lot of the time travel ones are kind of cringy. The time travel episodes from from any of them, really. But but any of the series that that did it, <sighs> trying to explain the thing that always you know when they go back, like uh, was it uh, Deep Space Nine or uh, I think when they went went back to the the Enterprise, some the original Enterprise for the Tribble episode was that. Was that? I think that was DS9. That was Space Nine. Yeah. That was Space Nine. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I get it. The retro uniforms and all that. But, uh, you know, I, that was always a kind of a, a weird point to me. I get why the uniforms looked the way they did in the 60s when they made the show. But why do we always have to embrace those uniforms <laughs> when we're, you know, when you're when you've got a new style? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess that. 
But I, I, I would say it's probably the biggest cringy thing was the whole uh, Cisco, um, the singularity. And then, they, you know, where he's kind of like their chosen one. And then it just, the most of the series, that's not even an issue. That's They don't even talk about that hardly at all later on. You know, they kind of just, like you said, hand wave it away. That's how they launched it in the first episode, you know. Yeah, he's a chosen one at the Cisco. beginning. Yeah, you're the Cisco, and then, and then they don't even they don't even hardly talk about it until the end, <laughs> the last well, episode. I, I'm not sure that's the case. I think they're they. You're right. It wasn't like the central point of everything, but it did come up uh, throughout the series. You know, um, they had a, a lot in the. I think it was the the second season where the 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 religious kind of the religious fights on Bajor were happening, yeah. and yeah. and he you know he did play a role, but part of it was also that he was. You know, he kind of wanted to reject that. He didn't. He didn't want to embrace that role for a long time. Also, so I think they did a decent job with it. Uh, but I will agree that it wasn't the central thing that that they didn't they do much to with set it. Up. Yeah. yeah, it's like they 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 put that premise in there, and then other than him visiting them a few times and talking to them on occasion, and like you said, second episode. How many seasons did it run for? Uh, seven. So, uh, seven. Yeah. So you got you got it in the beginning, then you got a little bit of it in the second season. Was there much beyond that until the very final season? At, at, at the very end, they they certainly picked right. it up heavy. But uh, yeah, there there was a whole you know two and a half seasons of war that it really wasn't right. part of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I um I actually kind of like that aspect of uh, Deep Space Nine where they uh, you know Star Trek is very I'm not going to say anti-religious, but there's no religion. Um, and so bringing in the Bajorans who have religion and him being a, you know, now a prophet type prophet. figure in this and him being very uncomfortable with that. I thought that was very interesting. And they did. Ex I agree with Cam. They did explore it in certain things. I, I mean, I would have liked to see even more uh, exploration. Well, that, yeah, I think uh, that's maybe where, where I'm why why I'm finding it cringy is because they did. They kind of just dropped it and then didn't talk about it for an extended period of time. And it's like they could have done more with it. And maybe fleshed it out a little bit better. And, you know, I what I think they got right was, you know, when they brought some, the, they brought O'Brien over and they brought, brought Worf over and the Defiant. Yeah. And when things shifted that, that's what made DS9 cool to me. Yeah. Is when you got to see that other side of Starfleet. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... Um, uh, deviate from my planned my planned questions because we've kind of brought up the ending of ds9 i want to do a quick discussion about the various different endings of the various shows um i don't know i think we'll skip the original series because they don't really have like an ending per se like they don't know that they are going to end but right you know next generation ds9 um voyager they all know they're going to end uh M, you know uh, enterprise they all know they're going to end all good so, things. So what uh, you know? What are your thoughts about? Let's start with um, uh, next generation, the ending of that. Best, worst, good, bad. I liked. I liked the 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 you know the ending of it. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good way to conclude a very long run of a of a show that you know really relaunched um, the the uh the ip i mean you know and it, it did it uh, in a good way you know um i think i th i th i thought it was i th i liked the ending of that one and that was you know what was it all good things dot 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 i think is how it yeah was the title of the episode or it was two-parter if i remember correctly yes it was and it came back to the you know it it, it went back to cube back to the first episode it wrapped with, up uh, the yeah. trial you know, humanity's on trial. I mean, I think um, I would kind of agree with you. It was a, a reasonably good ending to a, um, a show that um, like didn't have an end per se. Like for example, Voyager has a very obvious ending, right? They get home, they get yeah. home. Right. but you know, that doesn't have, a very obvious ending unless you want to, you know, you want to kill off Picard or you want to blow up the ship or something like that. Right. So, um, and then of course they don't want to do that because they're going to want to make movies. Um, but uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I would agree that it's a pretty good ending. Uh, Cam, what do you, uh, what's your thoughts about it? I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was emotionally satisfying, but I can't say that I really loved the, 
the actual plot of it. Um, you know, again, it did tie things up nicely and it, and it was kind of cool that you saw this future, you know, and them when they were older and the sense of, you know, where they might end up. But, you know, the whole thing with Q and, and that whole thing and going back to that, I, I, I never liked that setup, you know, from the from the very beginning uh, with Q and how he was kind of messing. It, so I didn't love it from that respect, but emotionally satisfying for sure. The last scene where Picard joins them for the poker, I thought was was, you know, perfect. Um, it really worked on, on that sense. And I did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, Computer in program. <laughs> yeah. It's all a simulation. Yeah, not so good. in that one <laughs> would not be so good. Um, yeah. I mean, we forget that that kind of was like, it was kind of in a television event. Eh? Like it was a big, sort oh, yeah. of, uh, back yeah. when we had those things on network television, a big event. Yeah, in fact, know. it wasn't it three hours. Wasn't it like a three it might have been a three thing? three parter. Yeah. Uh, no, it was. A, it's a two part episode. I don't. I think they did it back to back. I don't remember for sure. Of course, I'd have to look it up. But uh, yeah. Mm. Um. Okay. DS nine. Well, well um, go ahead and take well, it. Okay, I was going to say not very satisfying. Um. You know, it it did kind of wrap up, but it it left it on a you know a, a hanging element as far as Cisco, so. And to be honest with you, the whole thing with Gul Dukat and the way he ended, I, I didn't really love. So, you know, while I was a fan of the show the whole way through and I was okay with the ending, it, it I wouldn't have done it that way myself. And it, it left me wanting a little bit. Death Angel yeah. Shadow? Yeah, I can, I can see that. You know, it's, like I said, you know, the him being a prophet and that, you know, at least they, at least they, they tied that up. That because that 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 thread, like I said, was hanging there for several seasons, and they didn't, you know, it was kind of getting a little little long there, and they they finally tied it up at the end. I, uh, yeah, you know, I I liked DS Nine, like I said, you know, I liked it especially when the, uh, um, you know, once once the tone shifted, you know, and you know, you you actually had the gem hadar and you you had the you know and then the whole the whole plot line of the founders and all that stuff it, it was know. a lot more it was a lot less star trekky than uh the rest yeah. of them eh? there's a lot more conflict and yes. Uh, yes different so the rumor for that is that uh you know is that uh the real star trek people because it was a ds9 they didn't really care about it so they didn't uh they didn't follow it as closely, so they didn't care about the fact that uh, you know DS Nine was quote you know breaking the rules or you know becoming uh, you know less Star Trekky and more conflict oriented between characters. So I mean that's yeah. what I, I've heard. Yeah. I don't know how true that is. But. If we have time about stuff on this, I'd like to talk about that element of DS Nine. You know when we're done with whatever other questioning you got. Okay, um, so. Uh, what do you guys think about the um, there are rumors that they had a planned eighth season for DS9. They were going to f focus a little more on, um, you know, this section 31 was going to be involved and that Bashir might have, you know, actually been the head of section 31 and running the whole show behind the scenes. All along. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's, hmm. that's a I'm pretty. Glad didn't do that. Yeah. That, that would have, <sighs> That would have been kind of weird, um, especially considering the way the character was. I mean, there you, there was a lot of scenes where you'd see Bashir doing you know stuff on his own, or was just one other person, and he you know was always seeming oblivious to the whole Section Thirty One thing when it you know popped up. And well, then that's perfect for him right. because he'd be the yeah. last uh, guy you'd think would be a well, maybe. Well, <laughs> You know, the could... one, there, there was one scene uh, in an episode where um, Bashir and Jake and I'm not, I don't remember who else was on there, but they were on, a, it was during the war and they were on a planet um, alone or, or, you know, with some Marines or something like that. And, and, and Bashir, they were trying to get some uh, piece of equipment or something somewhere. And Jake, you know, ended up running off because he got scared, you know, and, um, and, and Bashir somehow managed to like complete the mission <laughs> that they were on by himself and this was before they revealed, you know, his genetic engineering and all that, I think. So that was that was actually kind of a cool hint that he had more to him 
um, than we thought. But I, I didn't love that that whole idea in the first place. It was okay. Um, but they did kind of reveal it's like, oh, yeah, he was holding back in a lot of ways. Like when he was doing stuff with the chief, like playing darts, for example, it was like he was faking it the whole time, you know, uh, losing into thing they could have done. But like I said, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I didn't mind the genetic, uh, you know, the genetic aspect of Bashir. He might have just been, you know, if you if you consider you know, his whole life, you know, he might have been better than everybody at everything. He might just sort of tone it down because he's like, he, by the time he's an adult, he realizes you don't make friends by, you know, ki- kicking everyone's ass at everything you do. Maybe, uh, you know, just make yeah. it closer or lose every once in a while. So, or maybe he was just sharking them. <laughs> yeah. It was a dark well, shark. <laughs> you know, in, in general, I'm, I'm terrified of anything having to do with Deep Space Nine and them picking it up again or, you know, doing an extension or, or because it's like this is just a bomb waiting to go off to ruin my favorite Star Trek show. Um, yeah. So at this point, I'd rather just let it let it lie. What did you uh, want to you were going to talk about something about DS9? Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to talk about high points and and my high point is Deep Space Nine, you know, that for the entire Star Trek uh genre or ip i think that deep space nine is it for me i understand that other people don't like it as much but the reason why is it more than any other show really delved into the world building aspect and and the 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 politics of the federation not not real world politics you know and and the entire setting which i think is very very rich that you only see bits and pieces of through the other shows again you're you know you're on a, on a five-year mission you know where you're not encountering these things and deep space nine was the nature of the show was different you were dealing with all of those things that you only saw bits and pieces for and it's you know you're, you're firmly set in it so i really enjoyed that because it was an exploration of that world the star trek universe right. yeah i think i think they did a you know a really good uh, job you know as i mentioned before you know the the you you not only had the the Bajorans and, and the Cardassians and and the conflict that they had been you know they were an occupied you know thing and I guess it was if I recall it was a Federation treaty that that resulted in the Cardassians pulling pulling back and and you know trying to transition back into Bajorans ruling you know ruling themselves and we were trying to assist them but we weren't we weren't an occupier and we were more of a defender and it was kind of, you know. Yeah. It, and there was, there was the questions <clears throat> of the, you know, the ex terrorists, majority terrorists fighting for their homeland. And now, right. you know, mm-hmm. that whole terrorism thing. And then later on, there was uh, much more of a involvement of the various, you know, the Tal Shiar and the various um, secret organizations from the Cardassians and uh, Right. and all these guys and so there's a that's a little bit of a different a, aspect of right star trek yeah. that you're seeing so i thought that was very interesting too you know it was kind of story i mean you had the maquis um from you know that kind of launched voyager well yeah, it that also was, that it, was another it, the maquis also said you know that that kind of pivoted around um deep space nine too it or it, it segued into it in right. ways too so yeah it, it helped dealt with all those shows but the the uh, based on what you said, it, it did open up these other things, but I think it it did it in a way that didn't trample the the optimism of Star Trek, in, in which it's like you know the Federation is this kind of glowing you know example of righteousness uh, and and progress and all these things, but it's like yeah, but the real world's not you. I mean, and in what at one point somebody. I forget who it was, it was, or Ben, I think it was Cisco was talking about. It. He's like, what do you see when you look out of the out of your window at Starfleet headquarters? You see paradise. He's like, the real world, you know, the universe isn't paradise. You know, so I think they contrasted those things nicely without being like, oh, yeah, the Federation's really just a bunch of dirty dealing, you know, whatever. They, they didn't need to trample it um, while showing, you know, that things were different elsewhere. Yeah, uh, I think those are good points. Um, Voyager. Now, just before we talk about preface, um, I, I actually, you know, probably enjoyed Voyager more than, um, more than most people. Um, it's kind of, you know, it kind of gets a bit of a, uh, a bad rap sometimes. Um, I, I mean, I was very skeptical when it first came out and they had, uh, oh, 
they're going to got to throw in the chick who's going to be the captain. Right. And I think that, um, uh, the captain, the character of the captain was very, was weak at the beginning. Um, like they have her at the beginning of the show and she's like all moony over lose, leaving her boyfriend for this, you know, trip into the yeah. badlands and, you know, Oh, I'm going to miss you. And so, but that, that said, um, and I, you know, I think I like Kate Mulgrew as an actress, that said, yeah. by the end of the series, she was a tough captain that you know you could respect up there with Picard and any other captain. She she um, had to be. She had to learn. I mean, that was her journey. Yes. Really. Was, and it was, was it was done very well. Yeah. And in fact, there's a couple of episodes near the end of the series where you know she's a hard ass um, talking about you know making and Chakotay is kind of the voice of reason. He's going, you know, I think you're going over a little bit overboard on and, this and, she's and like, he, no. was the, he was he was yeah and she's like no we're gonna do it my way i don't care and he had kind of had to you know like he kind of i mean he always well, not, that was his, the line his journey too was 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 learning to be that the number you know, two yeah and and temper himself and and yeah. and temper the captain you know and there was a couple times where you know he's towing the line and it's kind of like you're like is he gonna tow the line or is he gonna you know could there be a rebellion on uh voyager i mean it's you know probably wasn't going to happen but uh on the show but uh yeah it's like um you know i thought that was a very great journey for her and i kind of like that show more than you know your average star trek it kind of gets sort of thrown down to the bottom and say but that aspect i respect that and you know maybe not the first and second seasons but by the end she was a pretty tough captain and worthy of the role well i think but that I, that brings up something that i think you find in all of the the new the not not the current trek but the then new <laughs> um series it, it always seemed like it took a season or two for them to get their stride yeah you know um and that's true with with you know tng i think it was by season three is when it really started hitting stride i, I know there's a lot of people that love season two but season one is horrible in my yeah. view it's you go wesley, back and watch it and it's <laughs> it's wesley crutcher saves the enterprise every week it's horrible yeah, um you're, you're right season one was it felt like rehashed old stories and season two started to get its legs under it but it didn't look as good you know with the old with the first season uniform still and all that so yeah season two was like kind of the transition as far as yeah, and, and I think uh, season and, three is when it hit. It, it, oh, yeah. it boom. Yeah. At that point, it was it was good. Jason and I, I think we've had this discussion once before, but um, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of season two. But I think if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I have to look this up. But I think between season two and three, like part of the way through season two, there was a writer's strike. So season two is very oh, rough. there's a long delay. Yeah, yeah, there's a huge delay, and I would agree that it's not until season three or four that. Uh, TNG got going well. And I actually, you know, looking back at some of the episodes in season five, six, seven, some of them were, I, I think were great. Like they, you know, almost every episode is, is a, an interesting, um, uh, you know, discussion, an interesting look at some aspect of science fiction that we, we have to look at. Like, uh, you know, what the, the episode where they, they, they keep going, uh, they crack, they basically crack the uh, the walls between different uh, parallel universes, and it right. ends up where you know there ends up with like a million enterprises popping in and out of everywhere, and you know right. they they blow up the one enterprise, which well it actually blows itself up, but um, it blows up. It's trying to um, uh, you know it's like it's it's Worf and uh, Riker on the bridge. They're all look they look like shit. Everything's falling apart. They're like. We can't go back there. The Borg have taken over everything. And they're like, no, we're not going back. After Picard tells them, you got to go back, right? Everyone's got to go back. So there's some very interesting, you know, episodes in those time frames. And I'm thinking, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, they, they did a lot of that multi, multi first uh, stuff well. Um, I thought, you know, overall. Um, yeah. it, it's throughout, there's throughout all of the the next generation era, you know, whether it be at Voyager DS9 or, or TNG, you know, I, I think but that I, was one thing they handled really well. I'm kind of taking us off the topic of the ending of Voyager. Good, bad. I, I mean, they made it home. Um, it kind of, 
I I remember, you know, God, I, don't, I barely remember the episode, but I remember kind of it left me wanting a little more. I think it's um the ending. Just to rem- it's uh, uh you know uh what's her name comes from the future. Um, the captain comes back from the future. She goes and uh, goes to the Borg and you know tricks the Borg into you know killing her so that Voyager can get back type of thing. Is that, yeah. Is that just kind of I don't know. It just does that jog any memories or anything? Barely. Yeah, I have oh. to go back and watch it. Oh, no, not really. So long. <laughs> yeah, it's been you know, and it's all I, I should go watch it. You know, <laughs> there's actually good Trek out there. <laughs> there's been some there's some comments that people are like oh well you know it would have been nice to see them you know walk off the ship on earth because i think they just end they the ship shows earth and they're like oh we made it and they think they kind of just end yeah uh, that way um there's no you know harry kim hugging his parents or anything like that kind of stuff so um yeah yeah I, you know it it I liked Voyager. I, I liked Voyager. I I think DS9 was probably my favorite series, but Voyager was up there. I like them all for different reasons, though. You know, TNG, it like I said, it relaunched the IP, whereas um, Voyager was was a spinoff, and you know, and you know that that came off of the whole Maquis rebellion, and that kind of launched that. And DS9, of course. Came on board. What? How, how many years was there crossover between DS9 and TNG? I I, think, I don't know how many years. I think it was but three. Three, was three that many? Three years. Yeah. It, it was but two or three. It's funny because they all had a crossover, right? Like you've got you've got the original series. You've got you know twenty years, twenty plus years, thirty years, sixty nine to eighty nine, eighty seven, eighty seven, seven eighty eight, something like so, that. Yeah. And then you've got, so 20 years, and then you've got, you know, TNG, and then you've got a little crossover with DS9, and then DS9, you got a little crossover with Voyager as well. They've got two shows going but there was a, time. There was overlap. There was at one point in time, all all three of the Next Generation Era st- shows were still on the air, were on the air at the same oh, time. Oh, really? I believe, I believe so. I believe there was like a, like a two-year period or something where they, you yeah, know. All three. Yeah. So you had Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know the thing I'll say about uh, Voyager is uh, I didn't watch the whole way through, so I can't say how the how the ending was. I, I saw a summary of it or whatever. But uh, if if you were into that original Star Trek of you know uh, voyaging and meeting you know new species and all this stuff, uh, it was like a supercharged version of that. It was like you know there there was no choice. They were out you know in the middle of nowhere, and that's all there was. You know their contact with the Federation was nothing to begin with and then eventually you know they had some ways to do it a little bit but um if you like the exploration thing that was just a show for you i guess well they yeah they didn't they didn't have the federation to rely on right so they were kind of a you know their own they were a ship out lost in the middle of nowhere you know and trying to get home but the irony is you know how they got there Yeah, and there was some good. There's some good episodes on that. There's a couple of false, you know, starts to get home, and then there's the whole. Uh, you know, you mentioned um, the Year of Hell, which my understanding was supposed to be a whole season, but they didn't get uh, the okay for that. So that would have been great. I mean, imagine that would have as a whole season, uh, but uh, they didn't get the okay for that. So they did. Uh, you know, Year of Hell. There was the one. They I guess it was a two parter over um, over a season where they had the smaller ship show up and they were doing unethical things with these aliens to try to get themselves home. And, oh, yeah. you know, Janeway had to put a stop to that. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing, so. Well, they, you know, they, they did. They, 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 but that was part, yeah, that was their, their, illus- that's how you illustrate the difference between right and wrong when you know it, 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 what's you know is it is it better to to save yourself at the expense of someone else or not you know it's right and it go but that, and that goes against the federation's uh you know 
what the Federation would do. And, and the guy, uh, the captain, his name escapes me right now, but he makes the point, you know, like, you know, you had a, to Janeway, you know, you have this ship, you've got, you you're meant for long-term exploration. You've got, you know, a hundred people on your ship. We're just a little science ship. We don't have anywhere the resources, you know, we can't survive as well as you can. You know, it's easier to follow your principles when, you know, you're in a much stronger position. So I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, discussion of that. Yeah. Well, that's something that, the, 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 that Trek did well was, was just demonstrating stuff like that, you know, putting, put, putting out these, these moralistic, concepts and making you think about them yourself as opposed to preaching them like is done today yeah. that's a lost technology yeah it's a lost art yeah. <laughs> um really do is. do we want to go on to um enterprise the sure. the <laughs> i like enterprise the, <laughs> the black sheep of the family yeah i i got a little bit to say about that go ahead I didn't dislike the show. It was okay, but it was another one of these things that it was like the the Star Trek universe had already established a, a perfect way for that show to go, which would have been, you know, they they wanted to start a pre Federation, and there's an event in there called the Earth Romulan War, and it, instead of this. Uh, temporal cold war garbage and, and all this other nonsense that they ended up doing. They had this event in which their show could have pivoted around. And it's like, you have the lead up to it. Then you have the actual earth Romulan war, uh, which again is something I always wanted to see. And then you have the aftermath of it, which was the creation of the Federation. It, it was all there waiting for them to do. And they decided to wander off and, and uh, it's, it's a little bit like the JJ thing. It's like, so you're ruining Let's this. The other this, way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like you, you've wasted this opportunity and 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 replaced it with something that wasn't good, um, as good at least. That said, the show in general, it's not that I hated it, but it was just a missed opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, I would agree with that, and I agree with your you know temporal cold war. Like you seem to have to. I mean, it's always difficult when you're doing a, a, a prequel type show. I mean, you've got to. You've everyone thinks you got to amp things up, but. We all know where things are going, right? So you mm -hmm. have to, you have to sort of, you know, you can't, we can't only, we can't go warp 10. We can only go up to warp, you know, four or five or whatever. We know that mm -hmm. the phaser isn't going to destroy the planet. It's only going to, you know, singe the guy or whatever, right? Like, because because we, you know, we know what the, it's going to be like in a hundred plus years. So you can't be more powerful than that. It's kind of a problem I have with discovery too, when they do the weird things in discovery, but let's not talk about that um yeah i would i would generally agree you they could have just stuck with that and it would have made a good show i yeah. i think um as much as i love scott bacula i think he was the wrong person to play the captain really yeah i don't really? why do you say that i he, he just I, I he i i used to joke and i think i've said this before to you <laughs> that um, to, to me, uh, he was basically, you know, it felt like Sam Beckett leapt into Jonathan Archer, <laughs> you know, yeah. he kind of played the same character, kind yeah. of, uh, bumbling his way through and it just, I mean, he did okay. I mean, but he I, got pretty hardcore in the later, uh, seasons. Yeah. he was all like tough guy and especially once the earth got attacked and yeah, like, yeah. you know, which, which of course, I lived in Florida at the time, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but you know, and I, of course, that's my house. There's, there's no, yeah, yeah, literally, it, it was. Um, but there was no mention of of that event in, you know, you know, in in any of the other shows. So it was kind of like, like you said, they were going the opposite direction of, of what the canon already had been. And yeah, instead of trying to backfill something of which there is nothing, <laughs> you know, they could have, you know, elaborated on something that was established already, right. you know, and really expanded it and explored it. Yeah. And there could, you know, there's a great opportunity for good storytelling during, uh, you know, lead up to a war, a war in the aftermath. I mean, yeah. there's been lots of examples of that kind of thing. I mean, DS9 had, you know, 
had that aspect too, right? There was a lead up to the the Dominion War, the war itself, right? Uh, the aftermath. But that was once it hit its stride too, you know. Yeah. When they when they when they really started and you know, but uh, I uh, the thing I did like in uh, uh, in Enterprise, I did like the the introduction of was it the Andorians. I, I thought that was a neat way to to yeah. bring them in. I can't remember the 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 uh, character's name off the top of my head right now, but I think that actor. Just, Coombs. Yeah, did, did uh, he yeah. I recently. Yeah, yeah. We just call him call all the characters who plays Jeffrey Coombs, right? Because Jeffrey plays Coombs everybody. died. Yeah, he did. What? A couple months ago, I believe. No way. Hold on. That'd, yeah. that'd be tra- a tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's you know he played all Wayun. He played all kinds of. He was always in he there. played Wayun, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always in there playing all kinds of guys yeah. and 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 all of his clones. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it does it, his Wikipedia page says he's still alive. Oh, maybe he is. I thought don't I thought tell me he, that. That's horrible. He's maybe that was the, maybe that's the original guy that played the original Andorian in in the old generation. Yeah, maybe. I thought I heard that he he passed away, but. Oh well. Yeah. Well, um, but you, you bring up a good point though that the, the Andorian storyline was it was like oh yeah this this is kind of getting into that because there was some history with the Andorians uh, you know having kind of a rough start with the fe- the pre Federation yeah. as well I mean they were a founding member of the Federation but um, yeah I, I liked that part of the show that was really cool seeing them I always liked you know you saw a tiny bit of them in the in the original series and a tiny bit in you know in other things just kind of in the background mostly but so I I enjoyed. Um, my pink, <laughs> My pink friend. My pink friend. Pink, pink skin. Pink skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was. Those were the good episodes of right. the. Uh, you know, there were, wasn't there an episode where uh, you know the, the the Vulcans are are have a secret base or something, and the Andorians are pissed off about it. I think that was that was yeah. part of the thing. There, there was a whole rivalry between the Andorians and the yeah. Vulcans. And those Vulcans were the good. Them. Those were good episodes. But you know, flying around, you know, going back in time and all this. Uh, you I know, think they overplayed that and, hand. Yeah. Really, to be honest, in in general, they, and they and they've continued to do that, of course, and Discovery and all yeah. the other yeah. stuff. It's, it's, you mean it's like time travel in general? You mean? Or, or just... I mean, even even hunting for nuclear vessels, you know. <laughs> Although yeah. I did see that movie in theaters, I I I, I got a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, fun. It, you know, it's it's a it's, it was a fan favorite, I think too. Oh, a keyboard! How quaint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It had a lot of funny moments. Yeah, it's just um, yeah, you know, it's it's tough to do a prequel, and if you do it, I think as Cam had, if they had done what Cam had suggested, just that whole okay, we're going to take this piece of Star Trek lore, and we're just going to go the whole thing, and I think they shouldn't be afraid to end it like when it's naturally ends, not oh they're right. still still popular. Oh, Let's we could get another, another season out of it. Slap another season on this sucker, yeah. you know? Like yeah, no, no. Do it, you know, end it off the storyline. Do a different storyline. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but you, you mentioned about TN um, original series didn't really have an ending, uh, and you're right, of course. But I, I think that it actually has two points which would have made beautiful endings. One is the end of Star Trek Two, and and the other one is the end of Star Trek Six. Um, it it just it you know it just kind of ended on a a nice moment for both of them, you know, at the, at the end of Star Trek two, uh, you know, Rathcon where, where Kirk, uh, Kirk's like, he's like, I feel young, you know, it kind of, it's, it, it it had a good close, but it also gave you like a little hope. That's like, Oh, these, you know, something, (laughs) they're going to be okay. You know? Um, and the same thing with, with six where they, you know, were like, yeah, we're taking our last, our last flight, you know? Um, I like both those ending moments. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move on. Um, um oh uh, all right i'm just gonna uh, real quick <laughs> my my cringy moment in the franchise i think was the the uh strange new world's klingon dance video uh, oh my god but uh yeah, i have me. not watched that we don't want to talk about that and actually, I, have, uh, yeah, I, I, I like i said I, I got six episodes into discovery and i said i'm not watching the new trek yeah yeah all right um all right i think we've got we got a few more minutes left we're getting near the end of the show we're going to end off at about an hour last question i'm going to put to the panel for discussion is what's your most controversial take on the franchise and if you've already said it mm. like you know there's either the thing you like or the thing you hate maybe that most you know the fandom might not agree with or you know you would get the most uh, beef from people about oh oh i love the life forms song 
<laughs> oh, Come on, everyone, everyone likes that, don't they? I, I don't know, but I, I, I got a lot of crap for that. I'm like, I think it's cool. Data's got a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, I thought I didn't have any trouble with that. That's uh, yours. That that would be mine. Yeah, that was that was that was mine. Uh, the the pink blood I thought was neat, and uh, of course I'm you know talking in the motion pictures now, but you know Klingons have pink blood. Hmm. It was fun. It was a fun way to find out. <laughs> oh. Floating arms and all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I guess I'm going to say that um, the, the this wait this is the the most controversial thing. Your or, take, yeah. Either like the, take. something okay. something you like or something you don't like that. Okay. Sort of more people do the opposite. Mine will be uh, no one would probably a few people would probably disagree with me in the past, but now yeah we get a lot of pushback, and that is that Star Trek is political. Uh, it, it, you know, again, I don't believe in the everything is political thing. And even when there are clearly um, commentary on social things in the world, it is not a political show or, or shouldn't be at least, you know, they've kind of, I'm sure, veered into that. But so you know, people hold go on. back and you- yeah, You're saying ahead. that it is a pl- it's not a political show. It is not. In its origin, at least, you know, people yeah. say you know they look back in in retrospect, they look back and say, oh, "Of course, it was political." They were saying all these things about X, Y, or Z and racism. Vietnam it's like, no, they, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. This is uh, this is due to modern poisoning of what storytelling is. People in the past were able to touch on subjects related to politics or social change or whatever without it being a political pamphlet. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fight that to my dying day that, that no, that's not only what Star Trek wasn't about, but entertainment shouldn't be about. You mean the Klingons um, weren't Russians? Yeah, exactly. But uh, the, yeah, the, I, I, okay. So you mentioned that it, there were inspirations for all these things, right? And, sure. and the Romulans were the Chinese and, you know, it's like uh, all of this was, <clears throat> had a basis in there, but it wasn't st- bashing you over the head with it it's an inspiration right. it, it's it's a theme it's not a, a literalist idiocy um that, that turns stories into into trash sorry that's a bit of a rant off topic a bit but that's that's where i would run into controversy no that's right on that's right on topic mm-hmm. um so i would uh, i mean i would agree with you actually and this whole thing you know klingons are the russians and Romans are the chinese or whatever like that's i mean any story you take where they've got one side against another side you can always draw those parallels like that's not really uh to me you know you're not you know oh well the klingons are saying the klingons are russian well you know that's not really a very i don't think that's such a great take i mean it's just Oh, okay, well, if our enemy is this, then you know whatever in this show, their enemy like that's just very. If anything, it's more like, more like the Mongols. Yeah, that's very surface, you know. Like, yeah, but but I would agree with you. I mean, to me, science fiction, like this is this is what science fiction does. Science fiction takes some sort of social situation where we are, and then invents either you know some usually a, a piece of technology. And then it takes our that would change our society greatly, such as, you know, warp drive or right. having people live forever or, uh, you know, uh, cybernetics um, being able to, you know, put our consciousness into a uh, into a computer like, you know, whatever it is like that's what science fiction does. So having Star Trek come out and say uh, one of my favorite examples of the original series is the one where uh, they meet the people and they're half black and half white. And, and then, and then and the other people are half white, and half, half white. white. Yeah, they're on the other side, and <laughs> you know that's a great comment on racism because yeah. you know they're going like, well, there's no difference between you guys. He goes, what are you talking about? These guys are white on the left side. They're obviously, you know, it takes me back to, um, to uh, uh, well, that's Dr. A, Dr. illustrating, you know, the some of the idiocy uh, that that goes on with with things like racism. And yeah, racism. It, it takes me back to my uh, Doctor Seuss where. Uh, they had these uh, the characters where they put this. They have uh, all the characters are the same, and they have they either have a star on their belly or they don't. 
And uh, these guys come and they sell these machines that take this, put stars on so that the guys without stars can put stars on. So they're like the better ones. And then the better ones go, well, I'll take my star off. And they just go on this big round and round until the guy, everyone runs out of money and the guys leave. They're like, okay, well, I've, you know, I've milked these guys for as much as I can. Right. Uh, and nobody knows is this. I think they're called sneeches. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, yeah. Star belly sneeches. That's right. Green girls got it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, nobody knows can remember who was what afterwards, right? Like that's a great story about. Uh, and uh, you know, so you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, sorry, not Star Wars, Star Trek or science fiction is political in the sense that it talks about you know societal problems or or looks at how our society might change. But to me, that's not really political. That's just exactly you know, what science fiction does. So to say that. You know, that episode of Star Trek where the, you know, the guys are black on one side and one on the other is political. No, it's just an example of social, you know, commentary, commentary like yeah. the and the, the next generation. Another the next generation one I like to always talk about is the one where uh, they go to the planet and none of them are there. Um, there are non-binary species, right? The They're three, not the three sex, uh, the three sexes. The... No, they have no sex. They've got the next one generation sex. episode you're talking next about. Next generation. They've oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and this one girl that Riker likes, one one person, she says, I'm, you know, I'm weird. I present as female. Like, I am not like everybody else. I'm a, uh, you know, a biological anomaly. And she... Um, she gets you know, altered, right? Yeah, and, she gets altered yeah. and they, they brainwash her. Or they, they fix her or, I don't know, they, they, they pray the gay away or something. I, I don't know what whatever it was. So that's an interesting, you know, that's an interesting comment on the whole, uh, you know, situation there. So, yeah. But even, I mean, that one, that one has a not... pretty, pretty direct parallel to conversion therapy. Right. Yes. But even though, even so within itself, it is a, it is a story that's it, 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 within itself that works. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yes. it's, it, you can take it literally within itself and not be like, well, it has to be related to, I mean, and clearly it was, but it, it, it's not political though. Like it's not right. saying like, you know, it's not saying one or the other, like it, 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 it didn't say it's and, right or wrong. It's just, yeah. like, you know, it's, it is what it is. And, you know, make you think, like you said, makes you think about it and come to your own conclusions about whether, whether or not it's right or wrong or just or not. Yeah. Instead uh, of telling you, know? you what you have to think about it. Right. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's what good science fiction does. I think that's uh, and there was there was a uh, uh, a planet that had three genders, wasn't it? And and like all the third one was required in order for them to reproduce or something like that. I don't remember an episode of Star Trek like that. I've read a it may have been uh, Voyager or something. I I swear I remember that. I've read a science. I mean, I've read a lot of science fiction. I read a science fiction story, a short story. I can't remember. Uh, but it's like that too. It's the it's had male and female, and then the the third gender allows the male and female to come together and right. reproduce. So it had right. three genders. But I don't re I don't remember that from Star Trek, and I, I don't remember one like that. But I have read a story like that. Yeah. But, uh, I don't I don't know. I, like I said, it's it, regardless. I remember it. You know, it's just like everything else. You know, they're not they're not telling you what to think they're presenting it to you in a way that makes you think for yourself and that's uh as, as cam said it's a lost it's a lost science or a lost art depending on your how you want to look at it <laughs> you know yeah um okay uh now i don't oh that was a good discussion i don't know if i want to do mine mine's kind of uh not as uh interesting as as cam's there um i'll do it though <laughs> so my controversial take is that uh uh, lower decks is not as bad as everyone says. Um, so uh, I, I have to admit, I started watching. I was not, you know, I, I, I had a very negative attitude toward towards it, even you know before and also watching the the first parts of it. Uh, but it's it's grown on me a little bit now. I don't know if it's really Star Trek because it's kind of a parody of Star Trek. I mean, every episode they have, you know three or four situations where they they take something that happened in Star Trek and you're like, oh, you know, what, well, like, sort of what happened afterwards, right? So, um, you know, so uh, there's a couple of ongoing jokes in the the seasons where they, they, uh, they capture the, you know, the, the intelligent computers that 
take over the world and they've got them all in these in this wall and in, in uh in the federation somewhere you know they're all in prison and they're all sort of bitching at each other all the time right so these various you know so they're kind of poking fun at star trek and you know maybe it's from a situation of love um i've never really you know is it that funny i've never really laughed out loud but there are some you know kind of funny things where like for example they go to you know they go to earth and they go to um uh cisco's father's um restaurant you know New Orleans. Yeah. and he's got his hot sauce is called uh ketracel white or something <laughs> like that <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of, they've got these kind of little jokes okay. in there that are kind of, you know, funny and they, they kind of take, but they're kind of take the piss out of it. Right. Like the whole thing, you know, these are the losers of Star Trek. They're going, they're going to do second contact, you know, like, well, you know, what happens after first contact? I mean, it's a good question. Second contact, what happens after? You know, like, but- Green girl, bring. Green Girl brings up a good point here. It's like it would it probably would have been much a spoof is is good, right? That's it's funny. You're you're poking fun at the thing that's, you know, serious normally and and that's all good. But it came at a time when everything else sucked, you know, <laughs> and it's like so we need another, you know, another thing kind of piling on which it, which is already a disappointment. It it just it hit at the wrong time, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, that that's why I, you know, I didn't watch Picard, and I know everybody's like, oh, well, season three, it actually is okay. And I'm like, yeah, but there's season one and two there. And, you know, why and do I want to ruin Season three of Picard is not that great. Like, don't. There you go. Uh, there's a controversial one. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it, it's, it's bad. I mean, people only like it because all the originals get together, and they sit around, and, you know, you're like, okay, <laughs> fine. But that's not, it doesn't make a good story necessarily. It's yeah. Not, a, it's a not good when science I... fiction. A day when I'm not taking a beating seems really great from the days when I am taking a beating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't like, mean it's a great yeah, day. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. You know, the fact that they tried to bring the guys back for season three and try to, you know, put them all together. Does, I mean, it's not a good story. Like, it's just kind of stupid. And, it's, it just, I mean, it's it not as bad just, as the first two, but first it, two seasons. But those first two seasons were horrible. I mean, that's just... It, it garbage. underscored what it could have been. Again, like like the Enterprise thing. It's like, why didn't you take this approach from the beginning <laughs> and you could have had three great seasons you know of of dealing with these characters that people love instead you're just saying oh look we we knew we could have done better but we chose to do two seasons of garbage first yeah it's yeah. just it, it it's disappointing so um okay so i'll i'll uh, so lower decks i mean it's not horrible don't watch it thinking that you know, it's Star Trek. It's kind of a spoof on Star Trek. And if you go in it like that, you'll, you know, you'll be okay. There are some not laugh out loud, funny moments, but some sort of like, you know, I mean, every episode has a couple of callbacks to something from, you know, Star Trek, the original, the, the, you know, the original or, or next generation, especially, uh, or any of the other things. And there's always references to other, to other, um, uh, you know, other shows like Voyager and Deep Space Nine. So there is kind of a lot, there's a lot of nostalgia stuff in there, but it's not, in my view, it's not really Star Trek. I mean, you know, you can see it from the opening sequence where they're fighting the Borg and the ship, the Cerritos is like running away, right? Like you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what it's going to, that's a, that's an example of what it's going to, you know. Yeah, you got to take it as out of continuity. Yeah. But the characters, um, the characters do grow and they see some growth in the, by the fourth season. And you're like, okay, I'm starting to, like, I'm starting to understand these characters and starting to feel a little bit with them now after seeing them grow over four seasons. So, um, you know, if you hate the show, you know, if you, you've never watched it, I would say maybe give it a try. Um, just, you know, you're not really seeing Star Trek and I would agree with, uh, both of you guys when you said if the others, if it had come out during the time when it was, um, you know, when Voyager, uh, Deep Space Nine and, and TNG were on, it would have been a good, you know, parody show. But the fact that everything they do is crap and really bad. And then they put this show in, which is going to basically, you know, make fun of the good, it, it, it makes it a hard hit. when you, when you don't have anything good and they try and put make fun of what was yeah. good yeah, yeah it it, it, it kind of it, it yeah it leaves a bad taste in your mouth i guess it does but i do have more respect for the show it's at least you know it's somewhat better written but it it is a parody uh and just on a note there they've just announced the last season of the show they're going to do one more season that's it for the for it's uh, already had four decks. seasons though 
Yeah, it's already had four seasons. Yeah. How many episodes are in a season? Uh, more than 12, but less than 26. I think they're, uh, like, it's not quite like a full old season used to be, but it's still a, a lot of, you know, a fair amount of episodes. I kind of, um, I kind of miss 22 to 26 episodes of, of a season. Yeah. Being the norm, you know. It's on the higher end, though. I think it's in the 20s, but I, I don't want to say for sure. I'd have to look. Um, I could be, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, it's got... Um, there was some talk about, you know, they should they should do a, you know, uh, call it middle decks and do the characters again, you know, in when they're now mid range officers or yeah. or even higher decks and have them all as captains or whatever. But you know, this sort of lower decks hasn't been um, uh, it hasn't been uh, examined as much. Like they yeah. did one episode in TNG about it, which was good, but they didn't really ever go. I think they're going to try to do it with Star Trek Academy, but I don't know. It was Just a great. To... That was a great episode, by the way. Yeah, but uh, what's going on? You know, with Star Trek, I don't have any any um, uh, any faith that they will do. Um, Star Trek Academy any very well at all. Like I just can't even make faith. Oh, sorry, I forgot. To Are they it. actually going to do a Starfleet Academy? Or? Well, they're talking I, about it. Who I, knows? I, I, I mean, they I, talked I, about doing that back in you know <clears> we, we thought we thought yeah. Next Generation might be a Starfleet Academy back in the day. Yeah, I thought Jason so. said that they were that was off the table now. Well, it is it is the property sold or what's the deal? What's oh, the current the status? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd have to. Jason will have to tell us. He, yeah, like, he looks see, into those he things. Back, we don't know any news without Sci-Fi for Me TV telling us. I know. I, just, I got some news here. Do you guys want to hear? Uh, Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> I, I didn't want to step on his. Uh, I have some news out here. Uh, let me All see. Right, go for it. Um, Star Trek Discovery's final adventure premiere globally, what, two weeks ago? So. Oh, yeah. Section 31 confirmed start of production. Uh, uh hmm. Mm. It's going to be more. I'm just. I, I already know it's going to be more. Let's force morality, our morality, down your throats. And uh, Strange New Worlds <laughs> teases season three. Season three goes into production. Um, Star Trek Prodigy got canceled, and it's going to go coming on Netflix or something. But anyway, I don't want to step on Jason's toes. But uh, oh, sorry. I, I wanted to mention this is kind of a funny. Uh, for lower decks, they have this uh, one episode where, or, or one part where they're like, the ensigns have to clean out the holodeck, right? And they're all like, oh, mm. it's like the job nobody wants. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's not a bad, you know, it's kind of a joke. But, you know, I mean, what yeah, would the holodeck know. being used for if it, if we had a holodeck, right? And who yeah. would want to clean that up? That's uh, kind of gross, but, uh, you know. Right. Yeah. I, gee, I, th I thought I a thought good point. All the I thought all the uh, uh, everything that wasn't the the living beings that were in there, I thought that was all taken yeah. back by the. It's about something that memory. comes out of the living beings, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. you know, it's you know, it's just not something we want to go. No, <laughs> neither did they. Uh, See, they they know they know. But that's something that they mention. Yeah, it's all these various things that you know. You're like, all right. Okay, so is there any last points? We're going to end off here. We've gone a little bit. What's In, tomorrow's show? We're going to do. Um, we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do a book, right? We talked about Heinlein's novels. Yep. You're going to do that, Cam? Sure. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a little change. So I'll, I'll I'll talk about. So this week we're going to go go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'll do the big um the big franchises so we did star trek we're going to do dune on wednesday and friday i thought we'd do more of a we'll do star wars and it'll do more of an open show like uh, like jason does we'll try to bring people in that kind of thing and then tuesday thursday we'll do uh, books we'll do heinlein tomorrow and then thursday i'm not sure exactly what we're going to do yet for thursday i thought maybe asimov but uh we maybe try and go somewhere else but we'll see about that um just sort of talk about their their whole uh their franchise the book franchise and uh, about stuff like that I'm trying to keep it up a little bit but yeah like and subscribe oh uh, oh we gotta have sorry we have i forgot one thing we're gonna end up every show with one we have to end up with a joke so 
a science related joke. What is the most scientific pet? You guys know? The I don't know. What's the science? most scientific pet? I don't know. Uh, the lab. Hilarious. I have, I have two. <laughs> there you go. You couldn't <laughs> get that one. No, I right. know. I didn't think about it. I was going to say a daggett, but you know. <laughs> All that, right. So I'd like to throw back for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I'd like to thank my co hosts, Cam and uh, Death Angel Shadow, for coming out, helping me out. I uh, appreciate everybody in the chat coming in. We, I'm glad we didn't, uh, we had some, a little bit of an audience. We didn't, uh, we weren't just talking to ourselves. So, you know, like and subscribe. We'll be doing this all week till Friday, and then Jason will take over next week. And that's all. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. See ya. Thank you.